name's Kathy A, and today we're going to do a special all about Lorac Cosmetics. And Lorac Cosmetics is uh, dear to me because um, it's one of the few really high-end lines that I actually pay the extra bucks for and I don't return the stuff after I do the special. Like a lot of other brands, I return the stuff after I do the special. But I'm keeping a lot of the stuff because I really love Lorac uh, products. So I was really excited to do the research and find out about how this company got started. And I think that's where we'll start off. I'm going to show you a little bit of history on the brand. And when we come back, I will do a full face tutorial so I can show you where I started from and how I got here. So we'll be back in just a couple minutes. Lorac Cosmetics begins with this lady, Carol Shaw. Carol was actually born into the beauty business. Her dad owned a hair salon and her mom was a manicurist in Los Angeles, California. Carol hung out at the salon but it was a tomboy hippie as she self-proclaimed and she had terrible problems with acne. At 17, Carol's Aunt Harriet gave her a gift that would change her life, a makeover at a posh Beverly Hills salon. Carol struggled with self-confidence issues and this makeup artist was so gentle and kind with her and made her feel like a million bucks. When she got out of that salon she was a new person and she knew what she wanted to be in life, a makeup artist. Two years later she enrolled at Kay Brown's School of Beauty in Hollywood, California and after graduation she found a job at that very same salon where she had gotten her makeover. It had been bought by Guido Umberto, famous for his products, and she worked there in cosmetics on the celebrities that would come into his shop. After building her portfolio for a, about a year or so, she went to assist Jose Iber, who was the known as the hairstylist of the stars. He worked on artists like Farrah Fawcett and Ali McGraw and Cher and she rubbed elbows with many celebrities, some of whom helped her find work in other areas, such as Cindy Crawford, who helped her get photo shoots, like this one, when she did the makeup for Vanity Fair with Katie Lang and Cindy Crawford, a very famous one. From working on movie sets, Carol soon realized that these actresses wore makeup from 10 to 20 hours some days, long hours in heat and lighting conditions, and it really wreaked havoc on their skin. Carol thought about designing her own makeup line that she could use on sets that would have ingredients in it that would be helpful and be able to withstand the long hours on the skin and still remain natural looking. She developed her own line of foundations and cover-ups, nine of them, in 1990. It was groundbreaking. She soon had a celebrity waiting list for up to a year, especially for the red carpet events, and she designed her makeup to use for the red carpet events. She did the fashion shoot for Winona Ryder for Vogue magazine, and she was a favorite of Nicole Kidman, creating many iconic looks for her. Other A-list celebrities were Naomi Watts and Deborah Messing, Jill Hennessy, Lucy Liu, Fran Drescher, Sandra Bullock, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Rita Wilson. She decided to release her own line of cosmetics called La Rock, which is actually her own name, Carol, spelled backwards. This was released in 1995 and she incorporated. She developed the line a little bit more. She added skin care to the line, moisturizer, face wash, and toner, and her makeup was famous for what was not in it, such as sunscreen, fragrance, and titanium dioxide, and silicone. She did Molly Ringwald's makeup for the film Pretty in Pink. Her line was now selling in high-end department stores such as Fred Siegel and Henri Bendel's. She was the makeup artist for Donna Karen's eyewear campaign. And then she decided to design a lipstick collection with each lipstick named for a different celebrity, such as Demi Moore, Farrah Fawcett, and Gina Davis, and Kim Basinger. 
This one is called Baby Doll now, but it was originally named for Farrah Fawcett. In 1996, Carol hired her brother Barry to help her with the expansion of the business, which she at that point had been running out of her home. She now released some new products like this one, the portable paints. These were colors that snapped together like Lego pieces and could be used on your eyes, your skin, your face. And she also got a lot more products, mascaras and eyeshadows and eyeliners and lipsticks and started with limited edition collections of various products. Her unzipped palette became one of her most famous and is in most of our uh, cosmetic collections and of course the pro palettes are indispensable to most of us. She became quite famous, started selling in Ulta and in Kohl's and other department stores. She attended a lot of beauty conventions. There she is with candy. And she was on Home Shopping Network selling limited edition sets on there. She also is an advisor for Cosmopolitan Magazine and Red Book, answering questions about cosmetics. And she continues to be a very active makeup artist in high demand with A-list celebrities. She also does cover shoots like this one for Amanda that she did for W Magazine. And the phrase, the red carpet authority, is really true to life. She uses only Lorac cosmetics on her clients. In 2012, she was the makeup artist for Bachelorette Ashley when she married JP on national television. Carol recently released a lipstick and gloss collection that contains lip plumpers, a natural tripeptide she calls Maxi Lip that visibly enhances lips, stimulating collagen and increasing lip moisture. As Lorac continues to grow in popularity with the general public, it remains the number one red carpet makeup used on the movie stars. So if you happen to be walking down the red carpet, or if you just happen to be walking your dog, products like Lorac will make you look and feel like a movie star. Thank you for this wonderful line, Carol Shaw. So now what I want to do is uh, take you a little back in time and we'll start off at the very beginning when I have my fresh scrub face out of the shower. All I have is moisturizer on my face so um, I'm starting from scratch from start to finish and I will show you how I made up using all the rock products. So through the magic of video, here we go. Woo! Okay, here's our whirlwind tour. This is the behind the scenes eye primer. And I'm just putting it on there real quick with the ring finger. Moving on to the face primer, this is the Porefection Mattifying Face Primer. I don't like it because it's kind of like a soft Vaseline kind of silicone feel to it, but it does work pretty well. I'm putting it under my eyes and in all the dings and dents that are near the center of my face. And we're moving on to the CC Cream in Light. And this has six skin benefits according to the packaging. It has really good things in it like vitamins A and E and C. It has red seaweed and green tea. It's tinted to hide imperfections. Hyaluronic acid, white peony, aloe, chamomile, and calendula. That sounds like Caligula. <laughs> um, but all those good things make up a fairly nice, smooth finish uh, for CC cream. Now I'm using this as a partial foundation. I'm going to be putting a powder over the top. But the coverage is pretty good. It's a light to medium coverage and it blends really well once it does blend. Looks like I found a good color too to match me. I'm spending an uncomfortably long time blending this out. I'm sorry about that. This is the... I'm just checking to see if there's anything I have to smooth out or tap out and it's not bad. This is the Perfection Baked Perfecting Powder in Light and this is supposed to be partially a foundation, partially a setting powder, partially a face powder and uh, 
Most of these products are designed for people who have normal to oily to combination skin, but it works pretty well on my dry skin. I was very pleased. As you remember, she had a lot of acne, so um, she designed a lot of her products with herself in mind. Now this is a duo bronzer and uh, blush set. This is Hot and Spicy is the title of this particular set. There's three or four different color combinations. Oh boy, goody two shoes, huh? Adamant. <laughs> well, watch me blend this out with my expertise here. I'm just whistling. There I go. Magic fingers. I think somebody was saying they couldn't stand watching people use their hands on their face when they were blending out makeup, but I find that fingers blend better than just about anything else and you have total control. See, I'm fixing that up. There I go. All right, I'm going to use the blush on one side of my face from the Hot and Spicy uh, Blush and uh, Bronzer Compact. Now, these are cheek stains. They are not blushes. They're really, really strong and pigmented. Now, this is called Coral Crush, and the pinky one is from the pro to go set that is called um, Rosy Glow. But I'm going to use the Coral Crush because I think it's more of a warm tone. I'm just using a teeny bit. Now, these are cheek stains. These are not blushes. So like one tiny little dab of powder does your whole face. It's unbelievably pigmented. So on both sides you can see how they look different. And see how pigmented it is from just one little swipey from that? That's from the kit. I really like it. That was a great kit. Okay, just touching up the edge spot there. Only had to do one. Now this is the Afterglow palette that came out uh, late last year. I'm just using one of the eyeshadows as a highlighter because it's kind of a shiny, kind of warm, mauvey color. Gives my face a little bit of dimension, and yeah, why not put it under my eyebrows? That's a beautiful palette. I'm afraid I only used that one color from it. This is the new eyebrow pencil from Lorac. And this is the blonde shade. And it's very, very nice. It's very thin little nib on there. It reminds me so much of the Anastasia uh, Brow Wiz. It's that thin. But I think you get a little more product in this one. Now, I don't go heavy on my eyebrows, and some of you may be cringing because you're thinking I could use another half an inch or so, but I just, I'm just not a really big eyebrow person. I'm using the other end there, the little spoolie, to brush it out. Now, this is a little pro to go. This came in the kit also. This has three colors in it, beige, light brown, and espresso. Apparently they are different than the ones that they sell individually for $15. So I had mentioned in an earlier video to pick them up, but this is a wonderful um, trio of eyeshadows. They're highly pigmented, the perfect shades for a good basic eye. You could literally use this and nothing else. Um, I was just putting the beige on there, which is kind of a shimmery color on my lid. And now I'm using um, the crease color, which is called light brown. It's a matte shade, which is perfect for your crease because you don't get all that shimmer in there. I just absolutely love this. And it blended really quickly. I'm using a Coastal Scents brush. Um, oh no, it's a crown brush. It's a crease brush from Crown Brush that I just got recently. Now I'm going into the last shade which is Espresso. It's extremely pigmented. I mean, wow. It's really, really uh, nice, beautiful color. You can line with it. You can use it as a shadow. I just think it's a lovely uh, trio. This is probably my favorite Lorac product. And it comes in that kit to go, the red carpet to go kit. And I'm just blending it out with a brush with nothing on it. And now I'm going to just add some other colors, I think, from some of the other palettes because Lorac is kind of famous for all of their eyeshadow palettes, especially the Pro palettes. There's Pro Palette 1 and Pro Palette 2, and uh, the, the shadows are just so wonderful. I think almost everyone should have this palette in their collection. Either Pro Palette 1 or 2 is fine. Um, there's only really slight differences in the two. Some say that Pro Palette 2 has more cool colors in it. Uh, maybe it does, but I think you can still make a nice warm eye with the Pro Palette 2. Okay, now that I've discussed it, I'm going to actually pick one of them up. 
This is Pro Palette 2, and you can tell the difference between one because it's the gray one. And it has, you know, the dark blue, and it has the mossy green. I'm going to use a little of that for a transition color. It looks like a light peach color. I'm going to use a very light color on the inner lid corner. And some of that mossy green, I just can't resist. I love green eyeshadows. I'm a little sloppy with that one there in the right. And I didn't blend it out. How embarrassing. Okay, this is Pro Palette 1. And you can see that it lacks some of the brighter colors of Pro Palette 2. I just added a little of the mauve taupe color on the center of my lid and then a little bit more light on the inner lid. Can't get enough of that light on the inner lid. I'm going into the gold and I'm just going to line underneath the um, inner half of my lower lids just for a little bit of a shimmer there. And now I'm going to curl my lashes. This is the, uh, I think it's an Essence Eyelash Curler, or Ulta. I don't know. I did eight seconds on each side. Now this is the mascara that comes in that red carpet to go kit. And I don't like the mascara brush. It looks like a giant Christmas tree attacking my eye. But the formula itself is pretty good. It makes a big old honkin' lash in no time at all. So it is a really nice mascara, but again, I don't like that brush. I poked myself in the eye just then. But you can see how quickly I made a, a big eye. I'm just going to go back onto the other side, do a second coat, this side, do a second coat. Not bad. There I am fluttering. Okay, this is the liner, and this is the front of the line Pro Liner, and it's in black. It comes in that kit again, that red carpet kit, which I definitely recommend you pick up. And uh, that worked really well, even though I don't like black. Now, I had to use a Tarte lip liner, and this is the Tarte's Universal Lip Liner. It's only one color. It looks like a natural lip color. Uh, I either couldn't find it or it was too expensive and I was too cheap. Now this is the Alter Ego lipstick from Lorac and the color is called Duchess. It's a really nice kind of creamy. I'm, I'm smelling the vanilla wafting scent but it doesn't uh, taste like vanilla it just has a slight scent. Now this is the lip gloss that also came in that red carpet kit and that's the Lip Luster Gloss in Peach Luster. And there we go. So there you have it. This is the Lorac look. And I'm really pleased with this line. I have enjoyed their eyeshadows for a long time. And I always buy their newest whatever comes out. This came out this past summer. I love the color Aqua anyway. And uh, although I only use this particular color as a highlighter, I actually really enjoy this one. Let me just stick that on there. I always got to play with eyeshadows. <laughs> I, like, I like using them. But this is a nice little um, compact here. You get the Lorac. <laughs> um, you get a nice mirror with it. You get a really nice grouping of colors. It's a, a tremendously interesting uh, palette. It's got some great stuff in it. Of course, Lorac Pro, this is a classic. Everybody should have this in their collection. This is the original uh, palette. All of these are shimmers, all of these are mattes, um, it's a really good set of neutrals. And then she just recently came out with the Lorac Pro 2, and this is a gray color. You'll, that's the difference in the two, even though they look the same. This one's gray, this is the second one. And again, the same theme where it's all matte on one side and all shimmers on the other side. There's a beautiful moss green, which I have on right now. Um, and this is a beautiful transition color, which I did use as a transition color. And then these lighter colors for the lid, perfect. Uh, very pigmented, very wonderful. Um, the reason I spent more time with this one is because this is just like the perfect little mini trio to go. Uh, these three colors I need my glasses. <laughs> I hate being blind. Oh, God. 
All right, these three colors, beige, light brown, and espresso. Espresso, espresso. Um, these three colors to me are all you need for a perfect eye base. I mean, you can add funky colors here and there from other palettes, but you know, if you just have this one little trio, which I think they sell individually for like 15 bucks, this is all you need for like a perfect base eye. You can line your eyes with it. You can wet these, you can wet these shadows and they'll come out much more strong and intense. You can make an eyeliner out of them. Um, especially this espresso, holy cow, look at that. It's a wonderfully uh, pigmented um, shadow and this, this beautiful, it's called beige, but it's actually a very beautiful champagne. You can use it as a highlighter on your cheek as well. And it's, it's just a gorgeous lid shade. I mean, I have it on the lids, but... Um, and then this is a nice matte crease. I mean, they really thought this one out well. This is my favorite Lorac product right here. And it's the cheapest. So, go figure. And I have the palettes. I mean, I'm an addict. I have them all. Um, and I've bought different Red Hot sets and things like that. I bought all the lip glosses and, and things. Speaking of, I do like the lipstick a lot. There's a slight vanilla cake kind of wafting, but it's not a flavor to the lipstick. It's very creamy, even though it's more of a matte shade. It's a very creamy shade. And that is the box for it. And this was Duchess. This is the Alter Ego <laughs> lipstick. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. I mean, I know what alter ego means, but... Um, interesting that the, the br bronzer and blush duo very much like NARS, Orgasm, and Laguna. Very much. I felt very much the same, except I think this bronzer is just a teeny bit on the goldeny red side. Um, but I love the blush, so I'm probably... I'm really torn whether I'm going to return this or not because I do um, I do like this blush so much, but this bronzer, I don't know, it didn't work. I, I don't think Lorac, Lorac bronzers have really worked very well for me. I haven't liked any of them. Now this of course came with the, um, the to-go package here, the red carpet to-go package, and it's a little on the pinky side, so I did not use it, but some of you with cool toned skin um, I would highly recommend this because you get my infamous little trio here. You get the mascara, a lip gloss, um, you get the face primer, and you get this blush. And I think that's a tremendous deal. I think it's $42, um, but it would cost you a lot more to buy these individually. Uh, the loose blush I got, I had coupons and I had Ulta points to spend and I think this wound up being only about eight dollars and that is on this side That's the coral crush color and on this side is the the one from the uh, Blush and bronzer trio the spicy spicy mix or whatever it's called <laughs> Now this powder was really great um, But more as a setting powder rather than as a foundation powder uh, I initially bought it as a foundation powder. I thought it would be like IT Cosmetics uh, Celebration Foundation, but it is not. It is more of a nice setting powder. You can get like a light coverage on it. Um, I may try this with Wayne Goss's method of powder first, then foundation, because I have a feeling this would work really well in that capacity. But it did really set the makeup nicely. I thought it did a great job. The CC cream went on really nicely. Um, the coverage is pretty good. I only had to go over a couple of the age spots um, one one more time. So uh, this was nice. There's a nice amount in here. I think this one is $28 or $30, something like that. So it's not too bad in the price points. Um, the primer is your basic Vaseline looking silicone kind of stuff. Nothing particularly special. Um, I do like the eye primer. Uh, it really does hold the eyeshadow on all day, and I was in and out in hot, humid weather. Um, I do portrait photography, and we had I had to be on the ground sometimes, and I'm holding lights and sweating, and there's heat, and there's leaves, and there's bugs, and um, <laughs> anyway, it's probably TMI there, but but this held my eyeshadow on perfectly, and I thought it it did a great job. So. Lorac is a true hit in my book, and I, I think it's 
even though it's a high-end product and it is priced a little on the high-end side, I think the products that I have tried have been well worth it. And one of the big surprises is the new eyebrow pencil. It reminds me so much of the Anastasia Brow Wiz and it's five dollars less. So, um, And I'd rather support Lorac. I think they give you a fair amount of product in the containers for the price you pay whereas Anastasia and It Cosmetics don't give you that much product, especially with the brow pencils. I was really shocked at how I had two It Cosmetics brow pencils run out on me within a two week time frame each. So, um, you know, I usually just use pencils because you know where you stand with a pencil. You know, you keep sharpening it until it gets to the nib and then that's it. But with these things, you don't know because you know, you're, you're twisting them up. This one twists up from up here. Um, but it has the same tiny little uh, nib at the end, just like the Anastasia, just like the It Cosmetics. And I love that because you, have, you can draw tiny little lines and it looks a little more natural than, you know, those big old honking waxy pencils that you can get uh, from other companies. So uh, the lip gloss generic. I'm not a huge lip gloss person. I mean, to me, lip gloss is kind of a, a generic thing you can find anywhere. Some of them are just not as sticky as others, so I'm not that picky about lip gloss. So it was okay. It's a very similar color to the Duchess lipstick that I used, so I thought they were a really good match together. Um, I love the eyeliner, despite the fact that it was black, and I don't like black. Um, I don't like to wear black liners. Um, it went on really nicely. It stayed all day. Um, it's very easy to control to make a line with. So um, the eyeliner was very good. So all in all, a total win. <laughs> so that's about it for Lorac today. I hope you've enjoyed this particular special. Uh, it was a lot of fun bringing it to you. I really enjoyed researching and trying to find out um, a little bit how that company started because uh, it is one of my favorite brands. I, you know, even though it's high end and I'm kind of a drugstore gal, <laughs> I don't mind paying the money for Lorac stuff, especially things like this, which oh, I love this. And this reminds me a lot of what I had um, with my Radiant Lady uh, cosmetic line. I had something very similar with the vanilla ice, the cedar, and the coffee bean. You know, I had something very similar. So it's true to my heart. So everybody have a wonderful weekend and have a beautiful day. Take care. Toodles.